hope that things would go a certain way and it doesn't. And you will you have a tendency of internalizing that and beating up on yourself. And the Lord said to me, son, you're the captain of the ship. Steady as they go. Steady as you go. Stay in that ship. Don't move. Just keep doing what you're doing. Don't, keep, don't worry about what's happening. Keep doing what you're doing. Sometimes I say, Lord, I sat here this morning and I asked myself, Lord, what am I going to minister? The Lord said, do this. And I said, okay. And I looked at something else again. And the same scripture that I looked at earlier on this week, it came back again. And the Lord, I tried to go different places and it just wouldn't gig. It just wouldn't gel. It just wouldn't blend in. I just didn't feel it in my spirit. And then I went back to where the Lord sent me again in the same scripture that I had in the week and I felt peace in my spirit so here we go again this morning I thank God for his goodness oh hallelujah spirit of the living God I thank you I thank you so much Lord I bless you so much Lord with the fruit of my lips I give you thanks please don't leave son stay right it's hard okay sit on the side there if you want to Oh, God is good. It's good to serve the Lord. It's yeah. good to serve the Lord. Even when it don't look good, serve Him. When things are going wrong, stay with Him. Hallelujah. When things are good, stay with Him. When things are bad, stay with Him. Don't depart from the Lord. Stay with Him. Whatever you do, stay with the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Stay with the Lord. I can't encourage you enough. The times that we are living in is no time to be playing around and having a form of godliness and denying the power thereof. It's time for us to take our eyes off each individual. When you look at each individual, you look at each other, you say, well, he's not doing this, he did that, this, this. And that's exactly what the enemy wants you to focus on. To focus on the faults of the next person, what they're doing. And as long as you focus on the fault of the next person, you miss what God is saying to you. And you miss the nuggets and the precepts, the love, the affirmation, and the joy of serving the Lord. Amen. This morning I want to talk to you from the book of 1 John. 1 John. Oh, hallelujah. We're going to read 1 John chapter 3. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, I thank you. 1 John chapter 3. We're going to be reading from verse 1. And we go all the way to verse 10. Here we get at the reading of God's holy word. If you can rest upon your feet, for those of you who can, just rest upon your feet as we read the word of God this morning. Hallelujah. I felt the presence of God before I left my home this morning. The presence, good to see you, brother P. Good to see you, good to see you to see you. My heart dance when I see you walk through that door. Good to see you. I felt the presence of God this morning from in my home. And the enemy attempted to distract me. The Lord said, stay focused, stay focused. And the enemy tried to get the Lord said, stay focused. And I went back and I said, thank you, Lord. My soul is anchored in the Lord. In him I live and move and have my being. Mm -hmm. We're going to be reading from 1 John chapter 3, reading from verse 1 to verse 10. Here we get at the reading of God's holy word. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And every man that has this hope in him purified himself, even as he is pure. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth the law. For, this, for sin is the transgression of the law. And we know that he was manifested to take away, the sin, take away our sins. And in him 
is no sin. Whosoever abided in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither know him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. In this, the children of God are manifested, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. The text, verse 10. In this, the children of God are manifested, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. So far the scripture, let us pray. O oh God, your suffering. I bow to your sovereignty this morning, Lord God, at another time. I thank you that you hear me all the time. Lord, you're mighty, you're suffering, you're mighty, you're all powerful, you're great, you're glorious, you are my God. You are my father, you are my brother, you are my friend, you are my savior, you are my Lord. Lord, I come to you this morning and ask to give unto this thy servant the tongue of the learned. A mind sharp to comprehend what you're saying, Lord. Power to preach your word. Wisdom to understand. Ears to hear, eyes to see. I ask for the anointing that makes preaching easy. The anointing that will destroy yokes. The anointing that will shatter fetters and liberate your people and set us free. Father, I thank you for that anointing. The anointing that causes demons to tremble. The anointing that purifies. The anointing that causes demons to flee. Father, I just set the atmosphere in this place. Take full control of everything that is said and done in this place, that it may bring honor and glory to thy name. Through Jesus Christ of the Lord, who liveth and reigneth forever. Amen and amen. You may be seated. The epistle of John was written by John the Beloved. It is said that this particular disciple was the one that Jesus loved. But you also have to remember that this particular, let me have that idea, let me have the take this. But this particular, keep it open, this particular disciple was the one that they said that um, Jesus loved. And if you notice when you write, it says, the disciple that Jesus loved. But you also notice that he is the one that's writing it, John. So John is saying, he loved me. And I'm the disciple that he loved. He's not saying that he didn't love any of the other, uh, uh, any of the other apostles, but he just said, he loved me. And if you should see any of the, um, the, 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 the pictures of the Last Supper by Michelangelo, the scholars are telling you that John the Beloved was the one who was sitting close to Jesus with his head and resting on his breast close to him. So John writes from a perspective of one who experienced the love of God, one who understood what it means to be loved, and he also demonstrated how it is that he himself can give love. John wrote about God, about the love of God, about not only about the love of God, he also talked about 
the things that trips us up. John wrote about walking in love. He also wrote about abiding in love. He talks about staying with God, staying with the love of God. He encourages the believer to stay with the God, stay with God and just stay, not only to stay with God, but to abide in Him. John also wrote and he said, I write this that your joy may be full. John also went back and he says, the love that God has for us is a love that's alien. It's different. It's, it's, he says, the word that he used for alien is the word manner. Behold what manner of love. And, and, pontapos. That's the, that's the Greek word for it, potapos. And it actually means alien love. It means this, everything that's alien is out of this world. Jesus Christ is also out of this world. He said, I'm not of this world. So, John is telling you that the love that he has for us is an alien love. And I can understand why John would probably depict it as an alien love. A love that's out of this world. Because you cannot imagine why God would love you when you really know yourself. And you yourself don't even love yourself sometimes. Because of the things that we think, the things that we do, the things that we say, our own actions make us, make us cringe at our own behavior. John, however, he encourages the believer to let you know that despite your faults and your mess, you are loved. And if you know what he, he says, not only you are, you, you are loved, but you are beloved, it's, it's a sort of endearment. He's telling you that you're really, really loved. Amen. Some of us don't believe that God really loves us. You have to read the Bible and keep staying in it and get to understand the kind of love that God really has for you. John went on and he said, Behold what alien love. In your Bible it said, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. He tells you that when he said it bestowed upon you, it means he lavishes it upon you. He plaster it all over you. It's love. If you see a dog, a little dog, when they, 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 they that, that the master, the dog, treat that dog really, really nice and good, feed him and you know, really feed him good. When you see the dog come around the master, you see him wagging his tail and jumping up and down and what a licking, licking his master's hand and he, he can't sit still. Just excited. John said the kind of love that God has for us, he forms over us, makes us, he's, he's, he, not only does he form over us, he's excited about us. Amen. He lets you know that the love that God has for us is second to none. You're not a second class citizen. He loves you to the point where he says, he calls you sons. John said, the old manner of love, the Father has bestowed upon us, be lavish of us, unto us that we should be called the sons of God. Look at it in verse 1. He says, he called us sons. You can, uh, I'm a son of God. You can look at your neighbor and say, I'm a son of God. And people might look at you, you're a son of God? Yes! The Bible tells you that. That we should be called the sons of God. And in another, in, 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 in the manuscript that uh, we don't see it here, in your Bible, if you look at the old Greek manuscript, it says there's another verse, of, another two letters that come after that. It says, Kai Esme. And it actually means, and you are. It says, Be all a matter of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Kai Esme, meaning, and you are the sons of God. So he lets you know that you are not only called, he didn't call you just by name that you are a son of God, you are indeed a son of God. John is letting you know that you're, when you feel lonely, when you feel depressed, just know that God loves you. When your mother, this is why David could write, David could say, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Oh, John is letting you know that you are loved. It goes, for, it goes a little further and it says, therefore the world knoweth us not. 
because it knew him not. If I go there and tell everybody, I'm a son of God, they look at me and say, you're crazy. And I, I, I expect them to say that because they don't know me. And they are of the world. And the world, it says, the, the, the spiritual things, uh, the, the carnal mind cannot comprehend the spiritual things. So when I tell someone in the world that I am a son of God, they look at me and they look at me crazy because they are of the world. They don't understand me. They don't understand. And if I'm a son of God, like the other, another part of John John, as he is in heaven, so are we on earth in this life. So when I tell you that I'm not the son of God, they look at me like I'm crazy. But I am. I am. God told me that I'm a son. I'm adopted. I'm a son of God. He says, John said, and the world knew him not. He said, because it knew him. The, you see, he said, I came to my own and my own received me not, but as much as received me, to them gave my power to become the sons of God. I mean, when you look at the scripture, oh God relates to us as individuals, as children. When John writes, he writes to us as little children. In another passage, he says, my little children, I write unto you. I mean, he's letting you know that God looks upon, look at us as children. John is writing and letting you know that you are loved. If you look at verse 3, verse 2, he goes on further and he says, Beloved. That word beloved is the word agapetos. Agapetos. And you heard me, it, it, that word is an endearing word. It actually means dearly. Oh, beloved, dearly beloved. He's letting you know that you are really, really loved. So he says, Beloved. John is actually telling you that you are esteemed. And then when you go, that word that he used, agapetos, you heard of agape, agape, but this word is not just agape, it's agapetos, A-G-A-P-E-T-O-S. He's letting you know that agapetos, he said that you are esteemed. You are, and, and he went on, he said, you are, that word actually means you are favorite. That's what it actually means. Mean, you're esteemed, dear, favorite, worthy of love. So when you think about yourself and you believe that I'm not worthy of love, no, 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 back up off of it. John is telling you that you're worthy of love and he loves you. That's what he says, beloved. No, and then he says, now are we the sons of God. He says, not tomorrow, not yesterday. John is saying, now in this life you are the sons of God. Look at it. First John 3, 2, he says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And then he says, and you, you, John, the way John wrote this passage of scripture, it actually makes you think that you look at it and he wrote it to let you know that he understood that some of us might not grasp it fully for what he's saying. This is why he wrote the second part. He says, it does not, he says, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. Because some of us don't believe that we are sons. So, it, so we, are, we are still wondering, am I really a son of God? He says, it does not yet appear to us that what we shall be. But he really said, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. John is saying, you might not see it now. But later on when he comes, you're going to really realize it's an oh man, I was really loved. He really loved me. I am really his son. And here what he says. John went on and he says, he says some specific things, and I want you to pay close attention here. He says, after he described how your love, the type of love that God has for us, and, 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 and I want to go through this and, 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 and explain it to you in this way so you can get a better grasp of it. And you're some of you might have heard me talk about it before, but for those of you who are tuning in to to um to 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 to, the, to, to Zoom, I, I think this is fitting for me to explain it to you so you can better understand how what is going on and the type of love that God has for us. Because we oftentimes beat upon ourselves and believe that oh I'm not so worthy, and God is saying yes you are worthy, and you are saying no I'm not. Yes you are worthy, no I'm not. God is saying shut up and just accept it. For me to break, break it down to you so you can understand, the Bible gives four definitions of love. One of the, one of the love that the, the Bible talks about is eros. Eros. 
from the word eros, you can hear the word erotic. That's that sexual, that's that, 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 that sexual desire that a man would have for his wife. That's that, 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 that love is fraught with feelings and emotion. You react to a certain way, you know. That's that sexual love. That's eros. And from the word eros, you can hear the word erotic. Then the other love that he talks about is phileo. When he asks Peter, do you love me, Peter? Peter said, I phileo you. It actually is a love that a brother would have for another brother. That's called brotherly love. This is for to hear the word Philadelphia. They call Philadelphia the city of brotherly love. That's Philadelphia. Phileo is a love that a brother would have for another brother. Then the Bible talks about, and also Philadelphia, Phileo, that also frauds with feeling because you hurt my brother, I'm going to really fix you. I mean, it's in my feeling. Then the other love is sturdy. Sturdy is the love that a father would have for his children. That love is fraught with feelings also. You hurt my child, you offend my child, I'm going to come after you. But that's number three, you have eros, you have phileo, you have sturdy. But then there's a fourth love that the Bible describes, the word agape. The first three that I gave you, sturdy and eros, sturdy and phileo, feelings and emotions. Agape is behavioral. Agape has absolutely no feelings towards it. That's the kind of love God has for us. He agape us in a way, you in other words, when you messed up and you feel lousy and nasty, you feel like he doesn't love you anymore. But despite your wretchedness, he still loves you. He has promised you. See, because agape is behavioral, he can be, be God's purpose in his heart or in himself to behave towards you a certain way. Even though you're messed up. And you can see this in the scripture and know that he behaved towards you because he said, even when, he said, even while I was in sin, God still loved me. He says, he says, he says, for God commanded. Meditating. This is why the Bible said in, in, in Psalm 1, it says, 
Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the ways of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight in it is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the river of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. When you meditate on the word of God day and night, morning, noon, and night, you begin to think and meditate on the word of God. After a while, you can be, you, you, you only find yourself according to what the word of God said. What you think about then you become. Oh, there's a, there's a philosopher, I don't remember who it is, I think it was, it's not Blaise Pascal, I think it's, uh, he said, I think, Master, one of them, he said, I think, therefore I am. Whatever you think about too long, you become. You meditate on the word of God and I'm reading it, and after a while it's going to keep oozing out of you. Problem comes, you run to the word of God. So Johnny said, and every man that has this hope in him, purify himself. And you purify yourself by the word of God. He said, where shall a young man cleanse his ways? It's in Psalm 90, 119. He said, but by taking heed to the word of God. It says, thy life, thy word shall be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. John lays out a way for you to purify yourself. He also tells you that you're loved. And then he went back on to verse 4, and this is where we're going to look at some seriousness why you really want to clean up your life. In verse 4, John says, Whosoever committed sin transgresses the law. Transgress means to go against the law of God. For sin is the transgression of the law. The word that he uses for sin is the word harmartia. It actually gives you, you hear it talk many times about the word harmartia, sin. The word the Bible gives you three definitions of sin when you miss the mark. It gives you the, the, the picture of a bow, uh, uh, an archer shooting at a bullseye. And if, you, if he doesn't hit the bullseye in the middle, then the, the Greek would call it your sin, you miss the mark. So sin is missing the mark. Then it gives you another example of uh, a scale. You see the, 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 the scale, you have one pound and you have one pound and it's balanced. It balances out, it straightens out. If it's not straight, if it's, 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 it's lean, it's not level, it's not level. So when you, when you find that the scale is, you, 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 you find the scale is not level off, it means you have sin. You, you can't measure. This is why the Bible turns to Ben Shabbat and says, you have been weighing the balance and find wanting. He gave you also another depiction of sin of a man and a wall making a wall and he gets a plumb line. And in order for him to make that wall straight, he drops the plumb line with a little a lead, a piece of cord and a plumb line to make sure that it rests up against the wall. It's straight. If it's not up against the wall and it sticks away, you know the wall is not straight. So he measures it. This is why he says you're crooked, you're not straight. So sin is meaning sin means you're crooked. You're not straight. Sin means that you don't balance out, you're not level. Sin means you miss the mark. And John said, you know what John said? He says, Whosoever commits sin transgresses the law. Whosoever don't hit the mark, you transgress the laws of God. Whosoever don't measure up according to the word of God, you have sinned. You, 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 you. And whosoever you don't line up with it, you're, you're not left, you're not straight, you're crooked. This is why Jesus said, the, the Lord said, I make the crooked way straight. So whatever crooked way you have, God will make it straight for you. He, he has created a way for you to admit that I need your help to get my crooked, nasty, filthy way straight. And look what he says. I want you to notice something. The first thing that John tells you, you know, that you're a son. You are the sons of God now. I think I should name my sermon like father, like son. He says, the name what he says. He says, we know that he that is man, he says, if you look at verse 1, he says, you purify yourself. If you have this hope, you purify yourself. Purification or purify yourself, I can tell you by your fruit. I can tell what you do if you're a child of God. Not judging it, but I can look at your actions and tell you. You ever hear your mama say actions speak louder than word? Yes. Show me a company, I'll tell you who you are. You, you light up with dogs, you rise up with flea. Look, your actions speak volume about who you are. Don't tell me that you're a child of God. And you still come 
committing adultery and committing fornication. Don't tell me that you're a child of God and you're still stealing and lying. I didn't write it. We're getting there. Hold on. Hold on to your seat. He says, Whosoever committed sin, transgressing the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. When you transgress the law, it means that you go against it. You go against the law of God. I mean, you push against it. To transgress, let me tell you what transgression is. You see a fence over there, everything is fenced around, and you hear a sign that you see a sign that says, no trespassing. And you climb over, despite the sign is there that says no trespassing, you get up and you climb over and you go over the wall. You're just trespass. You've just transgressed the law. The people get in the sign and they put it on here. It says, trespasses will be shot <laughs> on sight. And they get a permit and they let you know if you trespass, you're going to be shot. And you, you didn't go through it yet, you climb, you look at the sign and you climb over there and you get shot. You want, but why are you shot? Then? Did you see the sign? Trespasses will be shot. If he's merciful, he might give you a break and say, get up, you come back again, I'm going to shoot you. So he said that when you transgress the law, you go against the law, God put a marker and he said, don't go over here. And even nature in itself that God created has a standard. Even the seas obey him. The waves come in on a certain part and they don't breach it. It goes in and it goes back out. The trees, they grow up on me. Even the nature is a respond to God. It doesn't transgress God. The sun comes up at a certain time because God said, light be and light was, and it continues to respond to the laws of God. If the sun said, I'm not coming up, then it's transgressing what God said. The moon shines where it will at the, pee -pee, at the, point, the portion of time that it's supposed to come up and shine. If it doesn't, then it's transgressing God's law. Even nature itself obey God. He says, whosoever committed sin, whosoever missed the mark, whosoever don't hit the bullseye, whosoever don't measure up, whosoever is crooked, you transgress the law. And then hear what he says in verse 5, he says, and we know that he was manifested to take away sins, our sins, and in him is no sin. I looked at this right now, and I just understand, he says, and we know that Jesus Christ manifests himself. You know what Jesus Christ is? God. God in the flesh. God manifests himself in the flesh for the sole purpose of taking away your sins. To rid you of that thing. You know that you have transgressed the laws of God. You know that you're crooked. You know that you don't measure up. You know that you're not straight. You don't balance. God manifests himself in the form of Jesus to take away your unbalancedness. To take away your crookedness. To take away your predilection to continue missing the mark. And now that you realize that he has taken it away, as sons, you behave like your father. This is why Jesus Christ has said, he said, all that the father, I've only done what I've seen my father do. Stay with me. Hear what he says. He's giving you the way in verse 6. How to overcome sin. He says, Whosoever abideth in him, in him sin it not. This is why Jesus Christ said, I am the vine and ye are the branches. The branches cannot bear fruit unless it abide with me. So John is saying, Whosoever abideth in me sin it not. He's telling you, if you stay with me, Abide meaning to stay. Abiding, you can't tell you're abiding with Jesus when you go in and come out and you go up and down. Abide means to stay. Abide meaning to stay with God. He said, whosoever, never said everyone, will. It's a general, he said, whosoever. Not everyone will. All who will abide in him. Everyone who will abide in him. John is making it quite clear what you need to do. Any whosoever, whoever is letting you know if you abide, if you stay in him, 
sin it not. See, he, he said, whosoever abideth in him, sin it not. Whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither known him, if you continue to do it. And you know that once you became a child of God, you've been messing up. He said, well, Pastor, how does John mean that if I abide him, I don't sin? Break it down to you. If you abide in him, you find yourself that you cannot continue to practice sin. I don't want to get there in a little while. He went on into verse 6 and he says, this is where the endearment comes in. Little children. The word is for children is the word technon. Little children, meaning my little, he's actually saying, my little darlings. My little ones. It's, 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 the word for technon, the word that he used, the Greek word for technon, is actually mean my, like an infant. He said, my little darling, my little darling children. That's what he's saying there. Look what he said. My little darling children, let no man deceive you. Mean in other words, don't be fooled. He that doeth righteous is righteous, even as he is righteous. When it says he that doeth righteousness, the word for dikaios, it means straight. If you find yourself continue to meaning justify, specifically equity, if you find yourself keep doing some unrighteous things or some crooked, sleazy stuff, then you're not righteous. You're not acting like your father. You're not doing the right thing. You find yourself doing crooked stuff and shady deals and messed up ways. Then I got to have, have a right to question you. I have a right to question who's your daddy. He said, my, my sheep know my voice, and another they will not hear. So if you find yourself practicing and participating in scheming things, I got a question, you're dishonest. I got a question, I have a right to question you. Uh, who, who, are you really saved? Are you really a child of God? Because every time you make an effort to do something crooked, because you have this DNA in you, you should, you're, you're convicted that I can't do that. Something inside of you convicts you. I don't want to get here and show it to you, so I didn't write it. And he really says, little children, my little darling, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. Even as he is righteous. Just turn to your neighbor and say, I'm following my daddy. If my daddy is righteous, it means that I'm righteous. I'm going to do what my father does. My father do, does righteousness, so I will do righteousness. He says, by, if you look over at, uh, let me give you a quick scripture to back it up so you can see. Turn to Matthew chapter 7, verse 16. Quickly. Matthew chapter 7, verse 16. Someone read it for me quickly. I'm read it loud. Say, Matthew chapter 7, verse 16. Anyone? Anyway, you shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Hear what he said. You shall know them by their fruits. So if the fruits that you keep bringing forth is lies, stealing, gossip, sexual immorality, adultery, fornication, those are the fruits that you're showing me. I have a right to question whether or not you're saved. Turn to Matthew chapter 7. Say Matthew 7, look at verse 20. Wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. By their fruit. You don't go on a mango tree and look and find plum. You don't go on a banana tree and find apples. When you see an apple tree, you're expecting to see apple on the tree. And if you see, if I go to an apple tree and I find pear, I'm going to be questioning, what is this? If I go to an apple tree and see banana, I'm going to say, I don't think I'm going to eat from that tree. That tree. Something is wrong. No man, I'm, by your fruits, you shall know them. Are, are you with me? John is saying, my little children, and I want you to notice what he called it, my little darling, my little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. Even as he is righteous, notice what he called your children. So he's expecting that his children will reflect the righteousness of God. So when you find yourself saying, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, then you know that I'm doing what my father said. I'm doing the things that my father does, and I'm demonstrating the deeds that 
my father does when I put the deed that's not my father, then I know I'm falling after the flesh. I'm going after the devil. Turn your neighbor to devil words, devil words, devil words. We don't need to go there. We don't need to go there. And then you look at verse 8. He said, he that committed sin is of the devil. Is not what I just said to you? He that committed sin, and the word for commit, the word he used for, for committed, it's a very strange word. It's the word poeo. P-O-I-E-O. -E from, the, from the word poeo, you can hear the word poem. A person who writes a poem is something that repeats, is continue to repeat the verse. You know, poet rhymes. So whoever poeo, who will continue to write, whoever continues to practice sin, look what he says. He that committed sin, he that continues to commit sin is of the devil. So if you find yourself committing sin, I have a right to question who you are. You keep doing the same nasty stuff over and over again. And you say, oh, I'm a Christian. No, you're not. You keep committing fornication. You keep committing adultery. You keep doing drugs. You keep stealing. You keep lying. No, you're not. You are of your father, the devil. And if, and if, you're, if, you're the, if, you're, if you are after the father, you're devil, the devil, the deeds of your father you will do. I didn't write it. That's what Jesus Christ said. And he go back and says, by your fruits you shall know them. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. And then he said, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifest. That he might destroy the works of the devil. When you're a child of God, you know that Jesus Christ said, when he came, by this, for this reason, Jesus Christ, the God manifests himself in the form of Jesus Christ to take away your sins. Sin is the works of the devil. For, and then they go back and tell you again, for this reason, God manifests himself that he might destroy the works of the devil. And if the works of the devil is destroyed in your life, then you straighten up and begin to fly right. You straight up and begin to do the things that your father does. Oh, hallelujah. It's time, but it's right. He says, my son, he says, for this purpose, the son of God was manifest that he might destroy. What it talks for destroy it means to shatter. It means to break loose. It means to dissolve, to break. It means to put away, to put off, to melt. That whatever is having a bond, Jesus Christ manifests that he may destroy, he may lose you from it. Whatever has your bound, Jesus Christ can lose you. Whatever has your tied up, whatever habit you have, once you confess Jesus Christ and you put that mark and seal upon you, it means that he's not worth Because when you confess Jesus Christ as Lord of, of your life, you now get your permission to come into your life and begins to work to destroy the works of the enemy. He says, for there is none righteous, no not one. There is none that sinned. For all of sin and come short of the glory of God. But Jesus Christ manifests himself. God manifests himself in the form of Jesus that he might destroy Hallelujah. I want you to look at it. He says, this is where it gets a little easier. Was manifest that he manifested, made himself known. Panare, manifesting him to show himself. God became man, show himself. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. God became man for one purpose, two purpose, to destroy the works of the enemy and to save mankind from their sins, from their transgression. But some of us believe that we can do it ourselves. And here what he says, if you look at verse 9, this is where he gets a really nice, one of my favorite scripture. He says, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remained in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. And here's where it gets really dicey. You're going to love this. In verse 9, 1 John 3, verse 9, he says, whosoever, say it past, 
anyone, everyone, whoever is born of God, I mean, the, in the etymological meaning, it, says, it means Gideon. Anyone that is issued out of God, if you're issued out of God, does not, and the same word again is the word poem, commit sin. That's the word you heard, you heard me talk about the word poem, a poem, a repetitive. Whosoever is issued out of God does not continue to commit sin. If you find yourself continuing to do the same thing over and over and you get comfortable in it, you feel like a pig in a mud and you get comfortable in it, you go, you squeal like a pig. You're, you're, if mud makes you feel good and sin makes you feel good and you keep doing it over and over again, then I know that you're not born of God because if you keep gravitating toward it and you no uncomfortableness in you to make you feel and know that this is wrong and you keep doing the same thing over and over again, it means that you're comfortable with it. It means that you're Jesus Christ is not your father. God is not your father. It means that something is wrong. Because if you keep doing the deeds of the devil, then I have a right to say that you are of your father, the devil. And his deeds you will do. Look at it. I didn't write it. If you do it over and over and over and over again, you need to get loose. You need to be saved. You need to come back to the altar. You need to, I mean, the church don't want to hear this anymore. People don't want to hear this anymore. They don't want to hear that sin is sin. Sin is sin. They don't want to hear this anymore. They want a nice gospel that you can preach over. And, oh, God is going to bless you. You're going to get a lot of money. Oh, God is going to bless you. Oh, oh Lord, I see blessings coming. Oh, but the sin is still sin. Oh, it doesn't matter how you take it. Righteousness is still righteousness. Oh, it doesn't matter what you look at it. If you still keep messing up, come into the Lusting, lying, stealing, doing drugs and messing up. You are not saved. Period. I've been right that the Bible says so. It means that you keep practicing it. And anything you practice becomes perfect. If you keep practicing on the piano, you'll never play the piano. You keep practicing it. After a while, you develop your skill and become proficiency at it. So if you keep practicing sin, after a while it becomes perfect and you find after a while it doesn't bother you anymore. You're comfortable with it. But when you're born of God, when you are issued out of God, you have no desire to do it. And I'm going to tell you, this is where you're going to know the children of God. Hear me? I'm going somewhere with this thing to me. He says, whosoever is born of God, meaning an issue of whosoever is issued out of God, does not practice sin or commit sin, for his seed remained in him. The word that he used for seed, he talks about his seed, God's seed. God's seed remaining in you. The word that he used for seed is the word sperma. You know where that is. It said S-P-E-R-M-A. The word sperma, the Greek word sperma, it actually means seed. That's it. He that is born of God does not continue to practice sin for sperma. God's seed dwells in you. If it's, and, and it says, it's God, it says, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. So when you get saved, when God adopts you as his sons, and if you're a son of God, it means that you have his DNA in you. His seed. Every child has the DNA of his father. Every child has the seed of his father. Every child has his father and offspring. And you know, if you ever see a child, after a while, you see that, uh, even children with their mother, it's the same thing. The mother wear spiky in the shoes and she can't walk right and see a little one year old and put her mommy's shoes and try to step like mommy in the spiky heel. She get mommy's lipstick, she see mommy put lipstick on, she don't know what, I just want to act like mommy. And they put on the lipstick all over their face, trying to do what mommy do. It's the same thing with the sons. They look at the father, they want to wear the father's shoe. They want to wear everything that their father has. Because what? I see my father do this, so I'm going to do the same thing. Oh, and that's why I said, like father, like son. So if you are of Jesus Christ, if God is your father, then you do the deeds of your father. If he's not of your father, then I, I don't do the deeds of your, I don't know who your daddy is. Ask your neighbor, ask your neighbor, who your daddy? <laughs> you can turn to your neighbor and ask him, who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? I can look at your words and tell you who your daddy is. Child went to a party and passed with a man of God and 
trying to get his daughter saved and she went on partying and came home late and he looked at her and he was a little rambunctious and good morning child of the devil and she said good morning daddy don't think you got it <laughs> he looked at her and he said good morning child of the devil she looked at him and said good morning daddy <laughs> He says, Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin. The word that he cannot, the word, the word that he, he the word, if you look in the Bible in, in verse 9, John 3, 9, is the word, the word that the word says he cannot. The word for cannot is a Greek word dunamis. Dunami. Dunamai. It says dunamai. D-U-N-A-N-A-I. Dunamai. And from the word dunamai, you hear the word dynamite. Here is what it plays out. Whosoever is born of God does not sin, for his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot. He doesn't have the dynamite. He doesn't have dynamite is something with raw force. You don't have the power to continue doing it. Because he is born out of God, meaning he's issued out of God. You don't have the power to continue to do it. You do it a few times and you get convicted. And you go over it again and you get more convicted. And every time you do it, you feel you get the heebie jeebie and you feel funny, you feel weird. I can't continue. You feel miserable. It means that you're born of God. God is telling you, stop it because you're not going to have no peace until you stop it. You're not going to feel well. You're not going to have joy. You're going to go through depression. You're going to go through all kinds of mess until you stop messing up. Until you begin to do the deeds of your father. You're born of God and you're not going to be comfortable until you begin to do the deeds of your father. You're issued out of God. Oh, hallelujah. Let the church go to God. Glory to God. The word of God is precise. The word of God will play around. And there are years in my life that I believe that I couldn't preach certain sermons because my life was in a topsy turvy and I feel like I have no right to preach this gospel. I have no right to preach it because my life is in topsy turvy and I can't preach it unless I'm living right. But baby, 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 when you are redeemed, when you know who you are in Christ, when he washes you and he fumigates you and he permeates you, he lets you know that you are mine and you're not going anywhere. You walk like me, you talk like me, you act like me, you smell like me. Child of the devil, child of God. 
Child of the devil, child of God. Straight up and fly right turkey. If you're born of God, begin to practice what God tells you. Begin to bear fruit. By their fruits you shall know them. Hear what he says. In this, the children of God are manifest. Anything that's manifest is showing. What are you showing? What am I seeing? When I look at you, what am I seeing? Am I seeing the children? Am I seeing the fruits that the devil does? The devil, if you lie, and I say, yeah, you're the, you're the father of the devil. You were the liar from the beginning, and you lie like a daddy. You steal. You're of the father of the devil. You come in fornication. You're of the father of the devil. You come into adultery. Then you're of the father of your devil. The devil is your daddy. If Jesus Christ was and God was your father, and you do the right thing. Oh, hallelujah. Foxes can't run with the hounds. Bitter and sweet water cannot come from the same well. If it's bitter, it's bitter. If it's sweet, it's sweet. You can't have both of them, sir. You can't have bitter and sweet water in the well. Look at it. It says it here. In this, the children of God are manifested and the children of the devil. And here what he says, he goes back and reiterates, he says, Whosoever doeth righteousness, he says, Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. So there's the definition. If you don't love your brother and you're unrighteous, it means that something is wrong. He says, But this, by this shall all men know that we are his disciples because we love the brethren. If God is your father and you love him and you love your brother, how can you say you love your brother? Okay. Well, Pastor, what if you get rid of all of them and you got one that you're working on? That means you're working on it. You, you, you still... Don't work on it. Do it. Yeah, but that's what I mean. Just do it. Okay. Like the night is slogan. Just do it. This is why the Bible said, if you notice the first verse when it goes, it says, if you abide in him, stay in him. Verse 6. Look what it says in verse 6. Whosoever abideth in him, sin it not. So the safe thing for you to not sin is to stay with the Lord. You hear me keep saying to you, stay with the Lord, stay with the Lord. There's a reason. Stay in his word. When you stay in his word, you don't sin. You don't have the proof. And even if the temptation comes, you know how to resist it. When you stay with God, stay with the Lord. Stay in his word. It's when you walk away from it and get enticed something else other than the word of God then you find yourself start to gravitate and move away and so let me, let me explain let me, let me explain something to you the enemy the Satan never tempts you with a whole big thing one time better not put it in your lap no he never does it's just a little bit it tastes it it's, it's good it tastes good you go mm, that tastes good that feels good so take a little more and then you take a little more. And before you take a little, you say, oh, come on, take a bigger bite. And when you take a bigger bite, you say, take the whole thing. Take three quarters of it. And you say, mm. Then you begin to get comfortable. A drug addict don't come a drug addict overnight. You try it first. Mm, I like that. Feels good. And you try it again before you know you get hooked. Sexual immorality is not a one-time thing. You get it the first time and mmm, it feels good. And the flesh cry out for it. It's like this feels good. And you get stimulated and you get to the place. I got to do this again. And all, before you find you're gravitating towards it, towards it. But are you married? No. Then what are you doing having sex? But with present day past, everybody's doing it. You're not everybody, you're a child of God. So if you're a child of God, manifest the works of a child of God. Oh, but it's only a little weed, it's only a little cocaine, it's only a little heroin. Really? The Bible says, Know ye not that your body is a temple of the living God? When you defile your body, any kind of drugs. I walked here this morning, and last week when I walked to the door, and a young lady walked up, she said, Oh, um, she had a little young man with her, she said, Oh, he's doing drugs and for many, many years, and he can't stop. I said, Come to church and sit down. I hear the word of God and let me pray for him. They passed several times, they didn't stop and came back and said, man, use the bathroom. Yes, she used the bathroom. Go ahead and use it. This morning I came back again. He was across the street this time and she was here. Man, use the bathroom. 
I said, what's the matter with you? Is this a habit? Come to church and say, oh, go ahead and use the white restroom. And as soon as she went to the restroom, I opened the door and I stared at the door like this. And I said, Jesus! Jesus! Then she came out after a while and I said, Did you go in my bathroom and you and I'm doing drugs? She said, Why don't you try? I'm not using drugs. He is not me. But I want him to get a clean. I said, Well, come to church and said, Drug addiction is a spirit. Cast that thing out. And then I went and put my bleach and thing. I went in there and cleaned the bathroom upside down. I'm not scornful. I'm not mean. I'm, 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 I'm serious. I mean to walk with God. You ain't gonna mess with me again, devil. You ain't gonna trip me up anymore. And every time I see, I recognize him coming. I, I, I see. I, but once I say the word of God, he showed me. I'm not supposed to walk in the darkness. To think I'm children. Of, I'm a child of the light. And once I see darkness, I recognize it for what it is. There's no child of God supposed to be walking in darkness. Walk in the light as he is in the light. He says, Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he doesn't have, he, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this is the children of God manifest. And the children of the devil, he gives the comparison, he says, the children of God manifest this way, and the children of the devil this way. And then he says, Whosoever does not, whosoever doeth righteousness. He says, whosoever doeth not righteousness, sorry. He says, whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. So two, three, four things. Four things. He described the children of the devil, their deeds. Then he describes how you, he, he talks how you identify them. John is purposely giving you clues here. He says, here are the markers. When you're traveling from Pennsylvania to New York, you see a sign that says 20 miles or 50 miles to New York. And every time you get closer, you see a little sign that says 10 miles to New York, 5 miles to New York. You see signposts. So when I look at a child of God, I see signposts. When you say you're a child of God, and I see signposts, and I see that signpost don't look too right. I see fornication, I see adultery. I see drug addiction, I see stealing, I see lying. That signpost is telling me something different. But when I look at the signpost of a child of God and I see righteousness, I see prayer, I see fasting, I see meekness, I see love. I said, hmm, that's a child of God. By their fruits you shall know them. Greater love hath this, that has no, no man than this, that you lay on your life for your friends. Jesus Christ says, I can tell who you are. There's some identified signs that I can look at and tell you who you are. Don't tell me you're a child of God and you're saved and you're sanctified and filled with the Holy Spirit and you still keep doing the same mess. I have a right to question you. I have a right to question your deeds. Which is it? The deeds of the devil or the deeds of your father? I can look at you and tell you who your daddy is. You dress like Pastor Hamilton, you look like Pastor Hamilton, you act like Pastor Hamilton, then you are his child. You call by your name, but you lie, you steal, you connive, you deceive, you deceit. I mean, come on, who are you? I didn't write it. It's time for us to begin to look at the Word of God and begin to pattern our life after the Word of God. God did not write this and give it to us for us to play games with it. We're living in dangerous times. You either go God's way, or my children will say, Oh, Daddy, you always say it's either my way or the highway. <laughs> it's either go God's way or go the devil's way. It's time for us to begin to take the things of God very seriously. We recently had an election. And a man in the White House, and people are saying that he's supposed to get four more years. And he lies. You do the deeds of the devil, your daddy. You steal, you connive, you deceive. And every second word out of your mouth is a lie. Who's your daddy? Let's see what this one brings. I can only ask you and invite you to pray for him. Pray for the one that's going out. He's still fighting. 
Pray for him anyway. Pray for him. That the eyes of his understanding will be open. And if it's a cheating election, pray that God pull the cover off and expose it for what it is if it is. But when I get to the chance to vote, I'm going to be an independent. Stand on the line and look. Make my decision. Take the better of the two evil if I can. But no more Democrat or more Republican for me because they are liars. Let me get back to my text. A couple of weeks ago I said I was telling you that if I could vote for Trump, I'd vote for him. I think I'm back off of it now. Hell no. God hell no. He's of your father the devil. Lie like the devil. Steal like the devil. Deceive like the devil. And I know your fruit. By your fruits you shall know them. What about when we get upset, Pastor, and we say things? We still the devil's child. It says follow peace with all man. This is our standard. Bible says, Be not hasty thy spirit to be angry, for anger rests in the bosom of fools. If you find yourself at the drop of a hat, I want to give you a piece of my mind. You don't have a full mind anyway. Nobody want a piece of your mind. Stay there, keep your fight, keep your mind. I don't know why I want your mind. Do the right thing. Be at peace. He said, Be angry. He said, Be God said, He's slow. If you're your father, He said, He's slow. And if he's the daddy, then you won't be slow to anger. Well, the devil just come in a split second past the nature of saying. Abide in the word. Let my word abide in you. Stay in the Lord. If you abide in me, and I abide in you, you bring forth fruits of righteousness. There's no excuse. There's no way around it. Word of God is what it is. Many of us want to play and play church and shrug around and shrug it and shrug around and he's going to shrug it off, he's going to shrug it up here and keep shrugging and shrugging it. Oh, I can do it. I know that. You know, all the church, the church lingo. You know, all of the church do. And you know how to go in and out. But is your heart right with God? Morning, I said, I haven't seen your daddy for a while. What's up? He said, oh, he's here. He tried to get 
didn't touch me yesterday, but Father, it, it was a Sabbath, and I, I, the Sabbath, I don't want to be disturbed by this. Relax and read my Bible. That's what he was doing. But I hear things like that, my heart dies. He let me know that he's staying with the Lord. Stay with the Lord, Sky. Stay with him, son. Stay with him. You stay with him, son. He'll get you through college. But when he gets you through college, he'll make you hold up as a trophy and say, Look, you go to college, but you didn't blend in. You go to college at the Institute of Higher Learning, but you didn't blend in. You're an example. Stay with the Lord, son. Stay with the Lord. He'll guide you through. Draw all of them that follow you. You don't follow them. You be the leader. You be the light that shines in dark places that they look at you. After a while, you're going to find them start coming to you and asking you questions, asking you for right. Bible and I gladly give it to him and he's digging into it and he's asking questions. When I hear about it, I said, stay with the Lord's guys, stay with the Lord's guys.